Yeah, welcome everyone. The Marijuana Time Show for November 15th, 2017. I am Joe Claire. I am your host. Go check me out and many other great writers at MarijuanaTimes.org. Cover the cannabis industry and community and beyond for you. All the news and opinion you need, go check it out at MarijuanaTimes.org. Share those stories. You can find these videos there as well. In shareable forms are also on our YouTube and Facebook pages. Go do all the things you need to do to be notified when, when a new video comes up or when you know, there's something on Marijuana Times or you know all that stuff. You all are familiar with Facebook and YouTube and notifications and such and such and whatnot and so on. November 15th is almost Thanksgiving, almost Christmas. Where's the time go? I have no idea. A lot of big stories coming up today. Talk about can of kids uh, and their um, annual holiday toy drive and some of the press they've been getting. Also, the group behind legalization of marijuana, recreational adult use marijuana in Michigan. They need a little bit more money to get their signatures in. We'll talk about that. Also, the Secretary of State of Kentucky has some interesting things to say about the need for medical marijuana. But first, the Marijuana Times show is brought to you by Nature Side Cannabis, grow safe and poison-free, all-natural, organic insecticides. If you're a cannabis cultivator in places like Colorado or uh, California or Oregon or Washington, you know, one, that your customers and customers anywhere don't want cannabis, whether it's dispensary or retail shop or patients or consumers or whoever, they don't want cannabis that's been tainted with pesticides and harmful chemicals. You also know that there are many regulations you have to follow as far as pesticide use. Cannabis, or sorry, nature side cannabis can get you ready for regulations in various states. Go check them out. Naturesidecannabis.com. They can even help you. They'll help you do what you need to do to grow safe, poison-free, chemical-free products and comply with the various regulations in your state. Go check it out, naturesidecannabis.com, a proud sponsor of the Marijuana Times show. This first story we're going to talk about comes from marijuanatimes.org. Amazing can of kids stories of cannabis oil beating diseases covered by a local California TV station. Now, apparently this organization called Can of Kids, in, in conjunction with some other organizations, they have this annual event and holiday toy drive, and uh, they bring a lot of focus to kids who use cannabis oil. Uh, something's been a common theme on the Marijuana Time show. So far, uh, Candy Kids was recently featured in a story from KTLA 5, a CW affiliate television station in L.A. Uh, you can find this piece, as I said, at MarijuanaTimes.org by uh, Jason Sander. The piece starts off describing the heart-wrenching story of a young man named A.J., <clears throat> Excuse me, Kephart, who was 13 when doctors diagnosed him with a deadly bone cancer, an awful disease he valiantly and bravely battled for uh, six whole years. Cannabis oil took my son off his deathbed, said Chris Kephart, AJ's father. AJ did chemo for 14 months, and for the second and third session of chemo, both of his lungs collapsed. He battled cancer for the next six years. 2015, doctors told Kephart that the cancer was winning. He was given three months to live. Uh, he had over 20 tumors in his lungs that he saw, uh, they saw as insurmountable. When the doctors were telling me that I had three months to live, I thought, what can I do? What can I enjoy in my last few months of life? How do I say goodbye? These are words no parents should have to hear their children say, especially from someone as young as AJ was. And these stories and stories like it, um, and we've talked about this before on the show, they're only important because the the obvious heart wrenching aspect of them. Uh, there's it makes people think, for lack of a better phrase, for lack of a better term, for lack of a better way to put it. Stories like this make people think. It's more than if an adult, you know, an old person is, is sick and they're using marijuana, and medical marijuana. People say, "Oh, well, that's great," but stories about children really makes people stop and think, what would I do in a similar situation? What would I do 
as a parent, my child was in any kind of pain whatsoever, what would I do? And the answer for the vast majority of parents, unless they have some, you know, religious hang up about, you know, not giving medicine to your kids or helping your kids. Um, most parents are going to err or come out on the side of, you know, I would do anything. I would do anything at all. Cannabis oil, give them cannabis oil, help them. Sure. Absolutely. That's what I'll do. And when you make people think like that, when you make people, you stick it in their face. That, more than anything else, changes minds. If you listen to a lot of older conservative people who are for medical marijuana now and they're for marijuana legalization, inevitably most of their stories will be, well, my cousin got this and marijuana helped them, or my uncle had this problem and marijuana helped, or my grandma was on her deathbed, or my dad was on his deathbed, or my child has something wrong and cannabis helped them in this way, and this is why I learned more about cannabis. When something's in someone's face, when they have to face it, that's when they really look into the issue. And when you're talking about kids, it has that added element for people, even if it's not their kid. They hear about someone else's kid being sick and how cannabis helped them. And they think, oh, well, what would I do like that? What if it was my kid? It makes them pay attention. It makes them think. And most of the time, I would submit, it's going to make them go look into the issue more. Uh, that may be wishful thinking on my part. That's that would be a fair, a fair criticism, I guess, or a fair way to look at it. But uh, for my part, I think that most people are going to look at it and say, "What would I do? What would I do?" And then maybe they'll go on to, to Google and find a site like ours or another site or videos like these and learn more about what's going on and about how cannabis is helping children. And it's helping millions, tens of millions of people in this country right now as I speak. And from there, they begin to wonder, why is it illegal? Why was it illegal in the first place? And what are we going to do to help these people? And the answer, of course, is legalization. Legalization is the answer, the ultimate answer. So everybody has access to this plant that most people agree is much safer than alcohol or tobacco or any other uh, most legal substances that are out there and has incredible medical properties. Again, maybe wishful thinking. We'll find out. This next story is from MLive.com. Uh, the group behind the marijuana legalization push in Michigan needs another $30,000 before turning in signatures. Uh, the Coalition to Regulate Marijuana Like Alcohol owes about $30,000 to National Petition Management the company paid to collect signatures required to make the ballot, uh, according to the, this is according to group spokesperson Josh Hovey. Hovey said the current goal is to raise the money by the end of the week and turn in signatures by next Wednesday at the latest. The group needs 252,523 valid signatures to um, get on the ballot. They have uh, and that has to be collected in a 180-day window and turned into the Michigan Secretary of State. Uh, you may remember in 2016, the same group got the signatures needed but a lot of them were invalidated as being outside the 180-day day window. So um, they did not make the ballot. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> Coalition Regulate Marijuana like Alcohol, like alcohol, they say that they have the signatures. They just need the money to pay these people off, uh, pay the rest of their bill, and then they can submit the signatures to the Michigan Secretary of State office. If approved, the petition would legalize personal possession Cultivation and use of limited amounts of cannabis for adults 21 and older and licensed marijuana-related businesses. Petition also calls for testing and safety regulations for retail marijuana. Legalizing cultivation of industrial hemp and taxing marijuana with a 10% excise tax and a 6% sales tax. Should the effort pass in 2018, which is what they're aiming for next year, November of next year, would allow Michigan residents the highest possession limits in the nation. And again, what I was just talking about, legalization. There's a medical marijuana program in Michigan, and if there's children who need it in Michigan, they have relatively good access to it. But for whatever reason, whatever reason you need marijuana, for whatever reason you use cannabis, you should be able to just go get it. You should be able to grow it at home. You should be able to go to a retail store and get it for whatever reason. And that is what we need to be looking at. And aiming for. 
Last but not least, my home state of Kentucky. Very interesting news came across the uh, the wires today. According to the Secretary of State, Kentucky must legalize medical marijuana in 2018. Kentucky Secretary of State Allison Lungaran Grimes said Wednesday, sorry about the butchering of that name, says she wants to legalize medical marijuana in the bluegrass state by 2018. A task force led by Grimes will also study and propose potential implementation and uh, regulation processes in a statement. Grimes said, quote, 2018 is and must be the year when Kentucky finally steps up on medical marijuana. We have to get this done to help Kentuckians who are hurting. State Representative John Sims, a Democrat from Flemingsburg, will co-chair a task force alongside Grimes. Um, and his statement read uh, as follows, quote, Kentucky is getting left behind on this issue. Already 29 states in the District of Columbia have enacted medical marijuana legislation to help their people. He said the research is done, the studies have been conducted, it works, and it's time we end our idling and start having conversations to bring medical marijuana to the Commonwealth. Sim says evidence is this showing marijuana combats a large number of side effects for cancer, MS, Alzheimer's, Crohn's, hepatitis C, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Of course, if you were a regular reader of the Marijuana Times, you know this. If you know anything about marijuana at all, you know probably a long list of things that it can help. And Kentucky's one of those states where it cannot be put on the ballot, so it has to go through the legislator, legislature. And having the Secretary of State on board, well, that's the biggest so far. There's been other people like State Senator Perry Clark who has attempted to get medical marijuana pushed through the legislature uh, every year, you know, Kentucky's for medical marijuana and veterans and people, they gather in Frankfurt and there's the hearings and they testify and go through their stories about how cannabis has helped them. And, you know, the whole process has gone through, but nothing ever comes for a vote. Uh, it's something that activists in, in Kentucky have been working on for decades now, going back to Gatewood Galbraith. And they have the Secretary of State come out and say, look, it's time to do this. It's not going to bring a lot of press attention, but that's going to cause a lot of people in the legislature to be like, well, you know, Maybe now I can, although what they're waiting for, I don't know. I mean, po most polls put support for medical marijuana above 80%. Many put it above 90%. I'm not sure what they need. A 100% poll that says no one disagrees with this, this at all. But at the very least, the Secretary of State coming out and saying this will provide them some cover, if you will. Uh, so they can go back to their constituents and somewhere in rural Kentucky, usually, and say, hey, you know, the Secretary of State's behind this. This is helping people. We just need to get this done. Just do it. We're talking that we've already moved on to recreational legalization and how we're going to do that. And some states like Kentucky are still discussing medical marijuana, which is ridiculous. Find an issue where people agree more on the medical marijuana. I defy you to do that. I can name 50 issues. I can make a list of at least 50 issues that people don't agree on as much as medical marijuana. Go check the polls. 80%, 85 90 I saw one poll was 93% people who agreed that medical marijuana should be legalized and cannabis should be legalized for medicinal purposes. Let's get it done. We're, people are suffering. She's right. We're right. Everybody's right when they say people are suffering. And if they need to use marijuana and they want to use marijuana, they should be able to use marijuana. This is the Marijuana Times show. This has been the Marijuana Times show. See you all next time. Here on the show, thank you to Nature Side Cannabis for being an awesome sponsor. Go check them out, naturesidecannabis.com. Check out the marijuanatimes.org, marijuanatimes.org. So you can find the Marijuana Times, you can find these videos, other stories. Go spread the word about cannabis, the truth about cannabis. Thanks, everybody, for checking us out. And as always, we will see you next time here on the Marijuana Times show.